Hi, today I'm going to show you how to uh, rebuild the HP LaserJet 4100 fusing assembly. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to install a sleeve, a replacement sleeve, and this is it. And this is really, really a, uh, a simple repair, and um, all you need is a number two Phillips with a good magnetized tips, and I also use a uh, pick tool, or a very small flat blade. Um, Again, this is for the RG55063 for the LaserJet 4100, and you'll get the part number right there. Um, real easy repair, and let's get started. Um, I like uh, not only the two tools, but I also uh, like a, uh, a piece of paper also on the way through this. And um, we're going to be using some lubricant, so you might want to get a, uh, maybe a plastic bag to put over your hand, uh, a sandwich bag, or even some, uh, some uh, saran wrap. Uh, let's start off by uh, removing the red wire, which is a grounding contact right here. One simple uh, self-driving screw. And once that's off, let's uh, untrack that wiring harness a little bit and lay it down to the bottom. Okay, now we have two screws on the top, one to the right, one to the left. Let's remove those. This repair is really simple. And uh, <clears throat> keep in mind that I'm not showing you a... Uh, a very in-depth uh, way of doing this. I'm just getting the uh, getting the basics, and uh, I'm picking out a uh, an approach that's going to be easy and uh, will also give you success. So um, some of the guys out there, of course, they uh, they show you or they talk about different methods they use, and they're more in depth. But this is just a very basic get the job done, and uh, it works well. Okay, right now we want to hinge this top cover back but it won't do it. We actually have a little clip and it's right here and we have to press behind it and you can see the way that came up. It's right here and you'll just take your pick tool and just push against it and now the cover will hinge open. And uh, don't be a, a, a nervous if one of the springs comes off. Just simply put it back into its little holder and we'll get to that when we reinstall it. Now, I chose not to uh, do anything with this side and also we're not going to remove any gearing. Um, what we're going to do though is we will be lifting up on this just a little bit periodically, just like that. We don't want to lift it up real high, but just, to, just enough to help us with this side. So what we want to do is lift up on that left side, lift up on that right side, and unplug your connector right here. Real easy. You can see it. At this point in time, grab your pick tool, and we're going to want to lift up on that left side and remove this white tap. And you're going to do that by pressing down on it. Pressing downward. And this little tab actually holds the element into its socket. Now you can lay this down for a second. The element, um, I'm going to show you a sample here. Uh, we're looking at it this way. And it's basically going right here. And what it does is it keeps this porcelain glass element locked into its holder. So. Um, and we want to be really careful with these because if we crack this, uh, you're going to be left um, at that point purchasing another fuser. So we want to work really delicate and work uh, slow and just take your time. Um, at this point in time, we can use a piece of paper and actually uh, um, put it underneath the sleeve a little bit. You can pick up on the left side. I'm using just an envelope. And what this does is that when we're using the lubricant, we're not going to get it on anything. Okay, we can pull off the collar. It pulls right off. And you can set this to the side. And right now you could uh, take a look uh, at the sleeve. We can see it. And uh, this is it. So um, you might have some uh, uh, print quality defects that the toner cartridge didn't take care of. Um, and, and, and you remove the fuser and you inspected it and you notice that this Teflon coated sleeve, which is uh, like your pans are at home, uh, the Teflon wears off after uh, uh, maybe 80,000 pages, 150,000 pages, or maybe you ran a lot of envelopes through your machine and the envelopes will actually after time uh, put lines on the side of the uh, fuser which are now starting to show on the paper. Regardless, um, if your printer's in a 50 air, this is not the repair for you, but if you're just dealing with uh, cop, uh, print quality issues and you've inspected the fuser, this is it. This is a great repair. So now we can just slowly pull off the old sleeve. Real easy. And you can see there's not much to these. Um, the replacement sleeve always has 
one side that has more of a uh, contact on it. And you're going to want to identify that. Uh, the opposing side has no contact, where the one side has a, a larger black area. That's actually a grounding contact. This will actually go on and you want it to uh, be where the red wire is. And uh, these uh, sleeves are directional, and this is important to kind of follow this. So right now, at this point in time, we're gonna, um, we're gonna lubricate the element. And I use a, uh, I use a glove, and um, we're using a, uh, a pretty good quality lubricant. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up the element and we're gonna coat this glass that's at the bottom. Not so much worried about this side, but the bottom of it is what we wanna do. And so, Right now, you're going to watch me. I'm going to kind of pick up on the left side, and I'm just going to run my hand down across the bottom, just like that, getting it nice and good all across that glass. You can see this is really not that hard. The, uh, the key here is the quality lubricant that we provide you with with the sleeve. Um, there's a lot of companies out there that uh, don't use a, uh, a good quality product, and uh, believe it or not, um, that uh, without using uh, this uh, lubricant that we provide you with, um, you just won't get the life out of these uh, fusing assemblies. So now we, uh, we, we, in, we applied our lubricant and we're ready to reinstall the sleeve. Remember, paying attention to the, uh, to the uh, one side that's got the darker line on it, that's going to go toward the, uh, that little red wiring harness. Simply pick up the element. And again, I don't... Uh, I don't chop my videos, they are what they are, and I try to work just like you. And you just want to carefully slide the sleeve all the way to the end. Nice and easy, just like that. Okay, now you can even clean off the collar a little bit and put a little lubricant on there if you, if you chose to. And you just want to pick this up now and slide the collar back into its socket and reinstall the little white tab. You can see the little white clip and it's going to go down at the bottom and you're going to just press up. And uh, don't fight with anything right now. Right now you just want everything to kind of kind of go together nice and easy. There we go. Snaps right into place. Um, mine didn't fit a little bit, <clears throat> and the collar needed to be pushed up a little bit, and that's a good thing. Okay, as we slide this down, pick up on the left side a little bit, and now we can reinstall that little wiring harness. Nice and easy. That's it. Sleeves on. Okay, now at this point in time, we can reinstall the cover plate, and uh, just kind of watch out for the left side where the wires are. Uh, they might get in your way a little bit. Start off with the uh, bottom first, and uh, just what you're going to do is hinge it right forward. There's a little cutout right in the middle, and it's got to go behind a little piece of plastic, so just kind of watch that also. All right. Now, um, you can also see where these springs kind of go into their place right here onto these collars. There's little actually plastic nipples that you can just position the spring right onto that and do that on both sides. Shut it firmly and you can see the left, this one side clipped which is helping it hold it into place. Now reinstall the two screws. Always trying to work in an awkward uh, position and just so you guys can always get the best view possible and sometimes it's a little difficult. This is really probably one of the easiest sleeves to do um, without uh, again tearing down the whole fusing assembly and, and when we redo these we, we do try to uh, of course uh, take these fusers and pull them down as far as we can to look for things. Um, right now we can reattach the red wiring harness. You only have one screw left, a little copper one, self-driving. And go ahead and put that back in. And again, while you had the uh, uh, the lubricant, uh, you know, when you were applying that, you could wipe off any excess um, when you're done. And right now, you can turn your sleeve and see how it's spinning. And this one's spinning real nice. 
that's it. Um, really, really just an easy repair. Um, again, make sure your connectors are in, both sides, uh, just to be on the safe side. And of course, this little guy right here, you want to make sure it's plugged in nicely. Go ahead and reinstall it in the printer and uh, run yourself 20, 30 pages. And uh, you'll find that this is a real easy repair. Uh, we sell this sleeve plus the lubricant on brokenprinter.com. And um, we also sell the whole fuser too. I hope this was helpful for you today. Thanks.